friends this is Ila. Welcome to Happy Nursing. In my previous video I told you about the concept of health and illness and the health belief model which helps us to understand the client's perception about health. Now in today's video we will discuss about the health promotion model. Health promotion model defines health as a positive dynamic state not merely the absence of disease. Its aim is to increase the client's level of well-being. The model looks like this. Here we have individual characteristics and experiences under which there are prior related behavior and personal factors which can be of different types biological, psychological and sociocultural. This is actually the part of our assessment. Now what do we mean by prior related behavior? Individual characteristics and experiences means individuals differ from each other depending on their characteristics and experiences means individuals differ from each other right so looking from that point of view their prior related behavior also differs prior related behavior means any behavior or habit caused by previous experiences for example while assessing a person we may see she has already been suffered from covid then what happens she is more careful she may develop a few habits like always wearing masks in public places being extra careful to cough and cold so these are her prior related behavior which is now a part of her individual characteristics resulting from her experiences. Next is the part where we assess personal factors. First of all biological factors. What are the biological parameters related to the health conditions like height, weight, vital signs etc. Then comes the psychological factors. Whether she has any mental symptom or not, is she in depression? Does she have a positive image about herself, etc. And the last one is socio-cultural. What are the conditions in which she lives? Does she belong from a broken home? Is her family supportive or abusive, etc. These all are our assessment. Next part is about behavior specific cognition and effect. We have already learned that individuals behavior differ from each other. Now specific to those behaviors, there are some variables which affect their health and those variables can be modified through nursing actions. Let's see what do we have under this section. First one is perceived benefits of action. We have already discussed this in our previous video. Those who haven't watched it, you can get the link in the description box. For example, we are advising the person who have already a heart attack. Uh, what will we advise? To avoid fast foods, not to take too much pressure, light exercise daily etc. And the patient will understand that there will be an improvement in his health condition on taking those preventive measures. That is the perceived benefit. Probably he will not have to suffer another heart attack. Next is perceived barriers of action. What are the barriers to the preventive steps? They may be real, they may be imaginary or mental blocks. For example, a person has a very busy schedule starting from the morning, like a working mother. She has the household work to do, take care of her kids, um, attend to her outside job responsibilities. So she doesn't have enough time to exercise. This is a real barrier. And imagine someone who has a problem waking up early for exercise. So he avoids doing exercise daily and considers this as the reason that he cannot wake up in the morning. So he cannot exercise. But this is actually a mental block. Because exercise can be done at any chosen time of the day, as long as its regularity is maintained. Next is perceived self-efficacy. This is defined as the understanding of a person about his ability to execute a health-promoting behavior. And it also influences the barriers. Higher the efficacy, lower will be the perception of barrier. For example, as soon as we advise the patient to exercise, she thinks how she can manage her daily schedule and take out time from it to do that. Or the one who has a hard time waking up early, he can think it's okay, I can do the exercise in evening. Or he can think I have to develop a habit of waking up early and exercise. It's for my own good. So that is self-efficacy. Next is activity related effect. This is self-explanatory. The effect caused by the activity. Once the patient starts to take the preventive measures, he or she will see for himself or herself that he or she is having a positive change. His or her health is improved. He or she is feeling good. 
the more this feeling the more will be his or her self efficacy for example after doing exercise every morning the working mother is feeling good so she thinks she will continue to manage the time for her exercise no matter uh, no matter how much busy she is so her activity related effect influenced her self efficacy now it works in both ways the effect can be positive the effect can be negative for example the boy in our previous example suppose he did wake up early for a few days and went jogging but as soon as he returns he feels it's very tiring moreover his daytime nap is also missed so he decided not to follow the exercise routine anymore so then it will be considered as a negative effect for him and his activity related effect influenced his self efficacy to be reduced now there are some factors like interpersonal influences and situational influences interpersonal influences come from our family friends peer groups just as discussed in the health belief model some are advising us to take preventive measures it may come from the norms followed by the people around us or any other social support for example smoking is prohibited in a family automatically a good impact comes on the family members or maybe i have a role model like whom i want to be in future so i follow his healthy lifestyle or we have support groups around us who are constantly making us aware about the health problems we may have along with its preventive measures so that is our interpersonal influence this also can be both ways i have chosen the positive example it can be negative too if we live in a family where we can see everyone doing drugs smoking taking alcohol there is nobody to advise us or we have a peer group where we are constantly exposed to unhealthy behaviors then it may result in adopting unhealthy lifestyle next comes different situations which makes us follow different steps like the barriers i don't have much time for exercise so i cannot do that that is a situational influence the other way example would be suppose someone works in army so he, uh, he has to exercise daily and keep himself fit it's his nature of work if he doesn't keep himself fit then he won't be able to continue his work so automatically the situation influences him to exercise then comes the last part of our model that is the behavioral outcome what is the result at the end the outcome should be such that it helps to improve our health and maintain a better quality of life here we have commitment to a plan of action what does that mean when a person identifies a particular behavior contributing to his good health he understands that he needs to continue that behavior and he plans to do all he has to do to continue that behavior suppose the working mother plans to manage 15 to 30 minutes every day for her exercise she thinks yes if i can arrange my household work like this i can easily do the time management so that is her commitment to a plan of action next we have two things immediate competing demands and competing preferences immediate competing demands means those demands which are put on a person due to environment family or work responsibilities like the working mother exercises every day but suppose she has to go for a presentation one day at that very time which she has chosen for her exercise then what happens she cannot maintain her exercise routine generally people have low control over these types of demands competing preferences mean behaviors which can be altered by a person and therefore people have high control over those for example say there's a tv show which i like very much and it is aired just at the time of my exercise but instead of using that as an excuse i decided to somehow manage the time for my exercise and see the show later that is competing preferences lastly we have the final point that is the health promoting behavior the whole process starting from the beginning first we had some prior related behavior then our behavior is influenced by several factors we perceive the benefits barriers and our self efficacy then we commit to take the preventive action where we have some competing demands and competing preferences and at last we take the preventive measures so all these must result in such a behavior which will improve our health condition provide us maximum functionality and well being and that is called as the health promoting behavior
so that was all for today i hope you have understood this if you like this video then like and share this video and subscribe my channel see you in the next video thank you for watching